Uh, what uh, did uh, the MEC say were the reasons for them delaying payments to NGOs that are not only uh, are desperate uh, themselves, but the reality is that most of these NGOs actually help people who are indeed very, very destitute and desperate. Certainly. So the department did hold a briefing uh, today just to explain exactly what these delays uh, have been about and why this process of uh, allocating uh, subsidies to these various NPOs has taken so long. Now, if I take you back a little bit, we did uh, cover uh, several stories this week of Takalani uh, Home for the Mentally Disabled, as well as a child welfare organization in Benoni, which were, you know, complaining really that they haven't received their subsidies. At some point they were told that they had been paid exactly. and then they came to us and exactly. said actually we haven't been paid, exactly. we've only been paid, we were told that we'll be paid on Monday. Exactly. So the department is saying listen we're going through a vetting process and the issue is that this vetting process is a bit delayed. They have apologized for it and they're saying that uh, in the future they will be speeding this up because these NPOs were meant to get their first allocations by March so you can imagine it's May now they've gone two months without having uh, any resources to replenish uh, they've really been buckling to, to pay salaries in fact some uh, organizations haven't had an opportunity to pay their, their staff um, as well as the resources are really dwindling at this point and they can't pay their bills. In fact, uh, the, the child welfare home in Benoni said that the municipality was threatening to cut off their lights and their water and they had no idea exactly how they were going to uh, keep su supporting the children that they do. So uh, the department is saying that this vetting process is necessary as much as, as it is delayed. Uh, Following the life SED mini tragedy, as you can imagine, the Gauteng Provincial Department wants to be thorough and wants to ensure that the NPOs and the NGOs receiving subsidies say, are, are, who they, are who they say they are and are doing what they say they're doing. So let's just take a listen to MEC Maitula Koza and we'll continue. We uh, really asked the managers, the HOD, to ensure that next year, because at least they've started vetting, so things will be better, I think, next year, so that by end of March next year, I've really, really pleaded with them that they should ensure that by 1st of April, if Treasury gives them the funding, by the time they get funding from Treasury, NPOs must be paid on time. It's very, very important. So I believe that we'll prevent the delays by ensuring that this vet vetting process is done properly, because we have to do it, given the life asset demand. We don't want another life asset demand situation just to fund NPOs because we have to fund them. We have to vet them. They must comply, uh, but we must pay them on time. And I think, as I said, they did apologize for, for delays where NPOs were supposed to be paid on time. It does sound like they were making excuses for their own inefficiencies and uh, the unfortunate thing is that they are using that tragic um, SC Dimeni episode, which I think should be unacceptable. Well, from what I've heard from them, they're saying that the NGOs and these NPOs aren't completely blameless on their side. They're saying that this process is taking so long because many of them have not signed their service level agreements. Many of them are not really compliant. For an example, they're saying that uh, many of these NPOs, in fact, uh, at this stage we have 657 um, at this point that still haven't received their subsidies. They're saying that many of them are not, uh, they don't have their green status proofs. Uh, they, you know, they, some would say say that uh, uh, they bank, they, so the, the bank account number on the NPO certificate is not the same as uh, what's reflected when they need to pay these uh, specific NPOs. So they're saying that these NPOs need to also come to the party and comply so that they can be paid on time. However, in this specific case or in this instance right now, there does seem to be blame uh, that really does lie a little bit more on government side because, I mean, for two months now, uh, you haven't managed to resolve this issue it is a problem because now these NPOs are relying on donations they're relying on the little that they have in order to to really care for the most vulnerable in our society these okay. are children these are the elderly these are the mentally disabled uh, granted and I mean they are indeed correct I mean we had on the same night we had someone from the uh, Southern African NGO network who admitted that uh, these NGOs have problems serious ones uh, at 
that. He admitted also that funding has dried up and it's been going on for years now. International donors are no longer giving, you know, yeah. South African NGOs and uh, uh, community-based organizations money. But that would have been a plausible explanation coming from the MEC if, for example, they had given those that complied, exactly. right, the money and the support that uh, they deserved, and of course continue to process those that uh, do not meet their uh, basic basic requirements. Certainly, the MEC was uh, uncategorically clear that uh, this uh, should not happen again. She's actually instructed her officials to...